Today I'm delivering more or less the third Bakugo story in a row. Why am I doing that? For some reason my views are going down instead of up. Uh, so yeah, if, if you want to support me, please watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment something down below. This is the best way you can support me. Uh, and please remember to share it around. This way you increase my standing in the YouTube algorithm so more people, hopefully, will see my content. Please do that. Please, I'm fucking begging you like, holy shit, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on? I don't know what's happening. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's the cute animal picture of the day. Here to remind you to do exactly that. Also, I have a Patreon and merch store. Links down in the description. I really hope you enjoyed the story. It took me like two days to write it because of writer's block. I'm so sorry. I'm genuinely sorry it took so long to write this one. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. All right, let's 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 just get right into it, shall we? Your parents were the pro heroes Synthesized Angel and Warzone, two highly popular heroes in Japan's countryside, less unknown in the big city. They were both technology-based heroes. Your mother could bend metal to her will, allowing her to reforge any synthetic construct through manipulation with her mind. And your father could bring life to synthetic puppets. This meant that together they formed an almost unbeatable team. So when the news struck that synthesized Angel was pregnant with you, the media went nuts. But something was wrong. Very wrong. You didn't kick. You didn't move inside your mother's womb. Yet somehow she knew you were just fine. That was until the day of your actual birth. You had been born without legs and arms. Both of your parents were distraught. This was supposed to be the happiest day of your mother's life. And you ruined it as soon as you took your first breath. Yet your parents tried to stay positive. It certainly was a challenge. Your limbs weren't completely missing. Your arms and legs ended in stumps. So despite the rather macabre spectacle, you could move on your own. During the first few years of your life, your mother was very protective of you. She retreated from her job as a pro hero and secluded herself inside your father's home. Your father, on the other hand, worked overtime to support his family and was almost never home. But not one day did your mother believe he'd try to escape his situation. Protected and lonely you were raised. That was until you turned four years old and your quirk finally manifested. And nature had finished playing her cruel game on your existence. Granted, you didn't magically groom your limbs. But you didn't need limbs anymore. Your quirk, independent puppet, the name was given by your father, allowed you complete control of any synthetic material as long as it was somewhat attached to your skin. With it, you could create your own limbs. Prosthetics. Your first ones were crude, nothing but random assortments of metal bits from a radio you had broken apart with your quirk. Both your mother and father were overjoyed. You didn't know it then, but this little discovery saved their marriage. And thanks to your parents' own quirks, you were quickly given proper prosthetics you could freely control with your ability. To this day, your mother spoke of the happy smile on your tiny face when your metal limbs enabled you to walk for the very first time. Because of your little disability, however, you had been sheltered from the outside world. So the first time you ever really interacted with someone who wasn't a family member was in elementary school. You were shy and timid. For years you had just lived through your parents and you didn't want to touch anyone. 
your prosthetics had a lot of sharp edges, due to your dad preferring a more practical, rather than natural, look for your limbs. They were very self defensey to put it mildly. After all, you and your mother were his everything. Luckily, your parents were local legends, so you were treated with caution and respect. And thus your life went on as it did for any other ordinary quirk user. That was until the last week of your middle school days. You had returned to your smiling father and crying mother. Without saying anything, your father gave you an application form, informing you that he had recommended you for the prestigious UA High School. It really was a dream come true. You did feel heat rush to your face when you heard what needed to happen first. They had rented a small apartment for you close to the campus. So this is why your mom was crying. But with a smile you assured them that you were a brave girl. You could handle yourself. And then... The next few weeks went by in a heartbeat. You left your home and family behind for the big city. For a school you had dreamed of enrolling in for so long. And not only that, you were accepted on your father's recommendation. It made you feel really special. The apartment your parents had rented for you was tiny, just two rooms. A living room with a kitchen aisle and a bed, plus a bathroom with only a toilet and a shower in it. It didn't even have a sink, so you're forced to brush your teeth in the living room. But it was nice. You felt like an adult after being baby for so long. And after a few days of getting used to living alone, your first day of school began. You had qualms with the uniform. Your rather bulky prosthetics would be on full display for everyone to see. Sure, you could wear a hoodie, but that skirt would show your legs. And the leggings or stockings were all the questions. They would rip thanks to the sharp edges of your legs. And your request for a boy's uniform had been denied. Still, at the very least you were allowed to throw a long sleeve hoodie over your head so no one saw your glowing red face while you walked through UA's luxurious gates. Your goal was the hero course, Class 1A. A few people noticed your prosthetic legs, but no one really pointed them out. With a nervous smile on your face, you ascended UA's stairs. And finally you reached the floor your classroom was located on. It was still pretty early, so you didn't expect anyone to already be there. To your surprise, however, there were already a few students. A boy with a bird head who introduced himself as Tokoyama, a green-haired frog girl named Sue, and a girl you had met during your evaluation of your recommendation. It had been held a few days ago. Her name was Momo. You were honestly very glad at least one person present was a one you already knew, all by fleeting. I didn't see you during the entrance exam. Did you get in on a recommendation too, Ribbit? Asked Sue. You nodded. Oh my, that's impressive, Ribbit. Ribbit, what's your quirk? You blushed. It's, uh, embarrassing. Momo chuckled. <laughs> no need to be shy. I saw what you did. She cut a robot into pieces with that mechanical arm of hers. Your eyes widened. That sounds amazing, Ribbit. Can I see it? Your body began to slightly shiver. But after biting your lower lip, you pulled back the sleeves of your hoodie. Wow, Ribbit, Ribbit. I've never seen a technology-based quirk before, said Sue. You quickly glanced over to the other boy present. He just shrugged and then leaned back on his chair before putting his feet on the table. You were glad he was ignoring you. You weren't much for attention. 
The frog girl, on the other hand, wasn't actually that annoying. It seemed that she, just like you, was socially awkward and was simply trying to find a way to talk to you. To be honest, Ribbit, these two don't seem very talkative. Ribbit, she hushed over to you. I'm glad you're nice, Ribbit. You smiled at her. And she decided to quickly switch seats around to sit next to you. Over the next 30 minutes, the rest of your class slowly trickled in. The overall mood seemed excited and lighthearted. Definitely not what you had been expecting. And luckily, by staying quiet and pretty much exclusively talking with Tzu, you managed to go under the radar of attention. The rest of your school day went on as you expected it. You even aced a quick physical exam your homeroom teacher, Mr. Ayazawa, had come up with. At the end of class, before you could follow your new friend Sue into the cafeteria, Ayazawa took you aside. Your quirk's quite impressive, but impractical for school use. You took a step back. You thought you did well in the test. I suggest you go to the support course and let yourself get some proper arms and legs, mate. Your heart paused for a moment. Wait, so you weren't being kicked out? I... Okay. Aizawa smirked. What did you think I was gonna say? He then gently patted you on the shoulder. I know you're dead from my high school days at UA. It was the second year when I started. We didn't talk much at first. We weren't friends. But we had a few study sessions together. He helped me out quite a lot. You looked up at his face. I hope I can repay that now. With those words, he let you go off. And after that, your days at UA were spent like any other school day. you had before, with the exception of extended physical training exercises that thanks to your abilities were surprisingly easy. You didn't tire, and as long as your limbs stayed intact and your spine agreed with you, strength tests weren't an issue as well. This meant you had more time working on your academics instead of physical training outside of school. You were a model student to say the least. Despite that, there were problems. Bullying problems. One of the students from Class 1B seemed to have a vendetta against you and the others from Class 1A. However, he seemed to have a very specific fascination with you in particular. And the reason was obvious to you and your friends. His own quirk allowed him to copy others. So what would stop him from copying your quirk and then manipulating your limbs to humiliate you? If you had known that this scenario was actually about to happen, you would have skipped school that day. On a surprisingly beautiful Wednesday day, you were just leaving the library after a study session when you bumped into him. Honestly, it wasn't even his fault. He just happened to run into you. And out of reflex, he had activated his quirk. Well, yes. It should not have disabled yours, it certainly felt like it. Your robotic arms and legs immediately fell apart and attached to his. With a loud thud, your torso hit the ground. What the hell? shouted the boy, before loudly laughing. <laughs> what the hell? he repeated louder. Trying to fight tears of humiliation, you looked up at him. The boy's eyes were moving rapidly from his now armored arms and your hopelessly immobile form. Uh, p please help me, you begged. Not paying any more attention to you, however, he just turned around and left, leaving you on the ground like a stranded dolphin. The library was empty at this time of day 
and most students had already left by now. Having lost hope, you dropped your head on the ground. Why was this happening? And as if this wasn't enough to your embarrassment, you realized you needed to pee. Out of sheer desperation, you heaped your body onto your stumps. However, you are no longer a toddler. And there was a certain weight around your chest that threw off your balance. So after only having managed to crawl a few meters, you collapsed. Sweat and tears pouring down your face. What the fuck? said a familiar voice somewhere behind you, followed by a pair of loud footsteps rushing to your side. What the hell happened? The mystery person rolled you on your back, more rough than they probably intended. Where are like your robot arms or something? asked the voice. You blinked. The mysterious stranger was Bakugo, a fellow classmate. Seeing a semi-friendly face made you scream out loud. Please help me! You cried. Bakugo was well known for his egotism and short-fused nature. However, he seemed agreeable today. I mean, yeah, you need help, he grunted. Just, uh, how? You whimpered. Pick me up, please. Uh, how? You blushed. Like a toddler? It sounded more like a question. No, it was him who blushed. Okay, I guess. He awkwardly reached down to pick you up. With his left arm awkwardly prepped under your bud, and his right around your hip, he began carrying you. Uh, where to? Nurse's office? He asked. I actually live very close by, just... Just get me home. Got it. He mumbled. You were so embarrassed. To avoid eye contact with anyone, you buried your head into his shoulder. He didn't complain. Once you reached the outside, he spoke up. So, like, where now? This must be just as embarrassing for him as it was for you. Just down the road. I, I tell you when we got getting there. Okay. It's a big apartment complex. You won't miss it. While Bakugo was carrying you home, your bladder made itself known to you again. Slowly you exhaled. Uh, something wrong? I mean, outside of this entire situation. I really need to use the bathroom. Got it. He began to walk in a slow sprint to not shake you around as much. And finally, after an almost ten minute walk, you too reached the complex. Where to next? Third floor. Second door on the right. I have a keycard in my... In my... In your... He asked impatiently. Back pocket. He snorted. I've been carrying you around town like a baby. And now you'll get embarrassed. You whimpered. His hand slid across your bottom, until reaching into the right pocket. See, I ain't a perf, he growled. Only now you realize just how lucky you were that it was him who found you. After ascending a narrow flight of stairs inside the oppressive building, you two finally arrived inside your apartment. So, what now? I got some spare parts inside a box under the bed. Give me some. Bakugo gently set you down on your bed in a sitting position before crawling down looking for the parts. Uh, hurry up, please. You groaned. A few seconds later, he had placed the box in front of you. Then you told him what to do. The box contained the bare necessities to craft a new limb for you. They were bare basic metal skeleton pieces. After attaching them to your stumps and activating a quirk, 
you jumped up. And after a quick thank you, you rushed to the toilet. Leaving Bakugo alone in your little apartment. He himself shrugged and walked over to the sofa that you had set up in front of your TV. Then he pulled out his phone to quickly text his parents that he'd be coming home late. Katsuki wondered, what would happen next? Should he just leave? Or wait for you to say goodbye or something? You two had never really talked a lot, and mostly you avoided him due to his temper. So when you had finished your business and entered your living space, your head turned red upon still seeing him there. You were convinced he'd leave on his own, but at least now you could properly thank him. Uh, hey, you said. He turned around. Hey, so like, how did all this happen? He asked, confused. You shrugged. Well, I had an accident. Bakugo raised an eyebrow but didn't say anything. Letting you continue. I ran into this bully guy from 1B. Remember him? The boy's face turned sour. Well, I quite literally ran into him and he, I guess by accident, copied my quirk and negated it, leading to my limbs detaching themselves and, well, here we are. He went quiet. What a joke, he growled. What? you asked. And he didn't call for anyone. He just left you there? After basically amputating you? You whimpered. That sounds more harsh than probably is, right? Bakugo stood up and took a step towards you. There's no excuse for this horrible behavior. He scratched the back of his head. I mean, yeah, I'm not a good guy myself, but this is just fucked up. You shrugged helplessly, unable to form a sentence. To tell you the truth, he said, after that, I don't want to leave you alone. You blinked. What? He chuckled. Your helplessness awakened his protective instinct, and Bakugo could no longer see you as one of the other extras. But he couldn't say that, at least not now. So he simply crossed his arms. I want to make sure you're okay. Then he looked around. So, like, do you live alone? You nodded and he shrugged. Even more reasons to not leave. I mean, look at yourself. Just a skeleton. What if someone tries to break in? You bit your lower lip. Fine, you said. After that, Bakugo didn't leave your side until very late into the evening. It was surprisingly pleasant. He wasn't as short-tempered as he was in school. It was weird seeing the side of him, friendly, gentle almost. So when the time came for him to leave, you were almost disappointed and said, Thank you. I mean it. He chuckled in response. So, uh, what about tomorrow? He asked, almost afraid of his potential answer. What do you mean? He asked. I don't know. He blushed and looked away. He grinned as he realized what this was all about. <laughs> How about tomorrow I'll pick you up and we go to school together? You smiled. Okay. And when I see that idiot, I'll beat the shit out of him. D don't. You complained. What? You need some punishment for that. At least tell the teacher. You shrugged. Okay. I will. Bakugo reassuringly put a hand on your shoulder. See you tomorrow. 
he said softly before leaving.